So let's dive right in today on the two most important variables you need to know when you're talking climate change. How to reduce greenhouse gases? The variables are carbon intensity and velocity. Emissions equals gross domestic, domestic product multiplied by carbon intensity. That's the first variable. Most emissions are driven by energy consumption with cleaner energy sources having a lower CI, carbon intensity. Kinetic energy equals 0.5 times the mass times the velocity squared. Cutting the speed of a car from 70 miles an hour to 49 miles per hour cuts the energy requirements by approximately 50%. It significantly impacts CI. So there you go. Now you have the variables. Don't believe me? Let me tell you a little bit more. Since making a country poorer is not a policy objective, lowering emissions means changing energy sources and slowing down. And GDP growth needs to be less than CI improvement rates. This is a top level statement. Let me show you why it's true. The following slides show GDP, population, and emissions. First, the slide for the world at large. See how GDP and emissions have a relationship? Population does not. Okay, let's look at China, the number one emitter in the world. Yep, definitely a relationship there between GDP and emissions. I think you're seeing why carbon intensity is the measure. Population does not. U.S., GDP and emissions. Once again, there's a relationship. Once again, population does not. This is why I do not use per person measurements, sometimes called per capita, that you hear all the time in the media. They distract and dilute from what is driving emissions. Now that's not to say that population doesn't matter. Population comes into play when you're talking about the consequences due to emissions. And that's a subject for another video all its own. If the entire world has a carbon intensity of 0.1, it would reduce emissions by 66%. Today, it's around 0.3. China has a CI of 0.5. Why so high? Coal. The US has a CI slightly lower than 0.3. It's actually doing better than the rest of the world. So you may want to make note from what I was just saying as to which country is the primary problem today. Have an entire video on that subject. Let me state up front: these emission numbers should be treated as rough estimates, all of them. But that doesn't mean they're not useful. They give you a rough idea and tell you the direction of things. And let me also be clear that the US and Europe are not the root cause of the problem today. I will focus on what the Western world can and should do. I will not pretend the actions of the rest of the world are not a problem though. So everyone who wants to pretend the problem and solution is in the West alone, well, you probably want a different YouTube channel. Given that, let me throw a straightforward example of how to reduce carbon intensity in the United States. And this example is one piece of a whole series of actions that would have to be done over a period of time. There are no silver bullets. For the US, transportation is the top source of emissions. I will save the topic of EV cars for another day. Let's talk trucks instead. Using round numbers, about 25% of US emissions are due to transportation and trucking is roughly 25% of those. So that means about 6% of emissions are from medium and heavy duty trucks. Pretty simple so far. There are two paces, pieces to solving this problem. Technology and usage. There are plenty of videos about future truck techs. The key word is future. None of them are ready for widespread adoption today. Does that mean there's nothing we can do? No, not at all. Progress is being made on that, those techs, but trucking is in a pre-Tesla situation. So we better look at usage. Usage can be impacted right away. Trucks can slow down. Think back to the beginning of this video, 
Velocity has an outside impact, outsized impact on energy use. How much of an impact is difficult to say with precision because trucks don't travel at highway speeds all the time and only for a portion of their use, but it's not unreasonable to project that a carbon intensity reduction of 0.5 to 1% is a decent guess. So why is this not even discussed on all those videos you see about reducing emissions? I'll leave the answer to that for the comments section. I'm sure people have opinions. As both a project manager and an aerospace engineer, I'm also gonna let you know that the issue of trying to make an EV truck that's gonna meet everyone's requirements and is range competitive is a lot easier if the cruising speeds I have to add, aim for is lower. This also applies to cars and airplanes. Topics for another day, but the principle is the same. Slowing down is needed. There are, of course, time considerations. Reducing emissions is not without consequences. Some cost money, others cost time. Anyone who told you it was gonna be no pain was lying. The idea that technology is going to solve the problem without any consequences is wishful thinking. In 60 years, maybe Fusion will come along and be the solution to everything. Eh, maybe not. The actions needed today, though, are not fundamentally technological. They are a matter of taking actions that require political will and support from the people at large. I am not so naive as to think that just because I say it's a good idea or a president got up there and said, hey, let's cut the speed limit for trucks, that that's going to pass our Congress today. I suspect there will be events in the future that will bring this to a situation where it will. This example also illustrates that there's going to have to be a lot of small incremental steps to repeat what I said earlier. Changing the path of greenhouse emissions is a long term effort. There is no silver bullet. So, well, next video, I'm going to talk some about that number one villain, China. Talk to you later.